Hey, it's Jag. Motor set? Well, motor set is a term uh, that I've known for quite a long time. My understanding of that term uh, is basically um, what happens when you sort of go on autopilot. Uh, like when you get in your car intending to drive to the store and you end up at, at work uh, just because you drive to work all the time and when you get in the car, that's what you do. And you just got in, maybe turned the radio on, got in the flow, and you drove where you always drive in your car, even though you intended to go to the store, not to work. A, uh, a new subscriber of mine, a Andy Dragas, uh, noticed in the last video, the first video for this preamp build, that uh, as I was going through it, I kept calling um, the, uh, the tube triodes uh, V1 and V2. I'm using a 12AX7, uh, any 12AX tube can work in this preamp, and that's a dual triode uh, tube. So it's more proper to call it V1A and V1B for those two triodes. Um, somehow I went through all of my uh, drawing of the circuit, the layout diagram, doing that whole video, and didn't even think that all the way through I was calling it V1 and V2. I've corrected the schematic and it now has the proper terminology V1A and V1B. Uh, like I say, I just kind of got in the flow, got really excited about this, drew up the whole thing and didn't even think twice. So anyway, with that straightened out, today I'm going to start by uh, soldering the components to uh, the circuit card which we made uh, last week. I'm basically just going to work from the input end of the circuit card to the output end of the circuit card. I'm going to be using what um, what Kevin O'Connor calls galactic grounds. So I'll be using star grounds, but I'll be using several star grounds that will uh, then connect to main, uh, the main star ground either over near the input for the input part of the circuit or over near the output for the output part of the circuit. And the chassis ground will be well away from, uh, or the mains, the safety ground will be well away from uh, both of those grounds just so we can avoid interactions of, of noise on those grounds. On the, uh, the layout I drew, again, this isn't exactly how I'm going to run these off-board wires. But you can see here that uh, the cathode resistor for V1A goes to ground. And then over here, the uh, cathode resistor for V1B goes to ground. Um, and as well, the um, grid return resistor for V1B uh, goes to ground here too. So I'm going to install some bus wire from this islet to this islet then into this islet and we will have one wire going from this islet to ground. So I'm going to start by putting that in there. Um, I've got some bus wire here and I'm going to run the bus wire on the uh, underside of the, uh, the card. Uh, also I put some screws in the card just to keep it off the uh, desktop while I'm soldering. I need to connect bus wire uh, from here to here to here and then a ground that will go out. Now generally what I do is I bend these sort of not not too different from uh, the way a, a staple would look and then put it in where my first jumper needs to go and then I turn this over and uh, I use my pliers to pull these tight around the bottom of the eyelet and then I can trim off the excess once I've got the other wires uh, soldered in there. Now this other one that's going uh, from here to here, I need to be careful because uh, we don't want to uh, have that uh, touch uh, the eyelet uh, for the, uh, the drive circuit here. So when I do this, I will be putting it in again from the bottom, I will put it straight over and then do a little crook in it so that it stays well away from this eyelet. Looks like that can bend about there. And I put the first one on the top, not the bottom. So we will 
redo that. So I put that little staple in from the bottom for those two uh, eyelets. And then on this side, I just bend them over the edge of the eyelet tightly. Back to this one. So I will cut this end. And we want to put this in the bottom. And there's our other jumper wire in the bottom. We'll just turn this over. Bend these wires tightly. So that's uh, the ground uh, the ground bus wires. This eyelet, this eyelet, and this eyelet. Then I'm going to uh, drop the uh, resistor in there. Uh, that's a 4K7 resistor. Pull these leads. And uh, I have this ground wire that needs to go in here and it will go off to the ground. I will run that to the bottom as well. It just looks a little neater and cleaner. Okay, that's that pre-tinned. Solder that in there and trim the little ends off. We also have a wire that will go off the board here to the cathode of V1A. I like to color code uh, my wires as much as possible just so it's easy to look at things and follow the flow through. But I don't follow any um, uh, pre-prescribed uh, scheme for the colors that I use. In other words, I use the colors that I use at the time I use them. Um, to my knowledge, there isn't really a standard. There may be. I've never bothered to look. I mean to and never get around to it. So anyway, for uh, cathode wires, I'm using orange for this. So I will take some a length of orange wire and I will solder that into this eyelet on the other side of this 4.7K uh, resistor and that will be to go to the cathode of V1A. And again, I'm going to pre-tin the wire and we'll take that into the bottom as well. Next we have uh, the uh, 22 microfarad capacitor and 10K resistor for uh, the uh, drive circuit. That's these two components here. So I will get those situated and of course I should not have soldered that so soon. I did it uh, before. We need to also put in here the uh, capacitor, the electrolytic capacitor, 22 microfarad, uh, for the drive circuit. Uh, the plus uh, side lead goes in this eyelet and the minus lead goes in this eyelet. So we'll put that in and we also need to put uh, the wire in for uh, that's going to run off to the cathode of V1A. And then we can solder that eyelet. And the 10K resistor for the drive circuit. The wire for the drive circuit is going to go up to uh, the drive pot. I'm using uh, white as the color for all of my uh, wires going up to the controls. So there we are. We have a, a good start on this uh, a circuit card. Um, I'm not going to do any more explaining now. I will just uh, blast through this, solder everything on it, and we'll, uh, we'll talk about it or, or wrap up when I'm done. Well, that's a good chunk of the work done. Uh, I have now the whole uh, preamp circuit uh, card completed. The next thing I need to do is uh, make the power supply, build the power supply. I've uh, Last week I said I hadn't really decided what I was going to do with the power supply, and I have now. So I'd originally said that my, my, my plan uh, was going to be to build uh, what some people call the poor man's uh, power supply. Uh, that's where you take two filament transformers, so six volt output from uh, 115, 120 volt input, and you run through one, 120 in to six volts out, 
set up your uh, heater circuit on there. Uh, it was going to be a DC circuit. I'm, I'm not going to do that for now. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then you go into the 6 volt side of uh, another filament transformer and out the 115 volt side and you get 115 volts out the other end or 120 volts. At any rate, um, I was going to do that, but if you look at this, this whole thing, just these two transformers, take up uh, more space than the circuit card does. And I'm trying to uh, keep the footprint as small as possible. It's not going to be tiny like a, a pedal. It's going to be, well, I've ordered the chassis. It's 10 inches by 6 inches by 2 inches. So um, I did not want to use these two transformers and, and have a really big bunch of territory used up to make the, uh, the power supply. So I ordered a uh, uh, real transformer, um, uh, one that you would use for uh, something smaller like a, a, a fender reverb unit, uh, that kind of thing, uh, but it's all self-contained and it can go on the top of the chassis. And then I can just, on the inside, I can have a smaller card uh, for uh, the the rectifier and, and all the other circuitry for the power supply. We'll talk about that in the next video, but I'll show you uh, what I've designed so far uh, for the power supply. So here on the screen is my hand-drawn uh, supply. So you can see we've got the 120 volts in. Uh, I'm fusing it on both sides just for extra safety and then I'm using a Hammond 261D6 transformer which has 120-115 um, 100, volt in and two secondaries. It's got a filament supply here, a 6.3 volt center tap supply and a 250 volt center tap supply uh, and that's what where I will derive the uh, the power for the actual preamp. We're going through a full full wave rectifier, so two diodes on this side, two diodes on this side. Uh, we tie that together to uh, rectified um, about 250 volts uh, through smoothing capacitor, a dropping resistor, another smoothing capacitor, and then V plus. Uh, off to the uh, preamp circuit. I'm thinking that V plus or more accurately B plus uh, for the plates, the plate supply, that's what this V plus is, is going to be somewhere around um, probably 230, 235 volts uh, rectified DC, smooth DC out here and uh, we will drop it through plate resistors to the uh, preamp tubes. We'll do all the measurements on voltages and whatnot once we get this built. Um, I had said I was going to uh, do a DC heater supply for the tubes. Um, I've decided not to do that right now. I don't have to go through that, uh, that process right now. If I decide I need it after I've got this built, it's easy enough to change that to a, a, a DC supply. So I'm just taking the standard 6.3 volt out uh, I'm using, I'm not going to ground the center tap here, I'm going to use a resistively balanced uh, approach. So a 100 ohm resistor to ground on each side uh, of the uh, secondary and uh, then we will uh, power the uh, heaters for uh, V1A and V1B uh, from this, just like any standard, uh, any other standard tube amplifier. So at the moment, that's my power supply. Um, these uh, caps are fairly large, 40 microfarad, 500 volt caps. We're going to have 250-ish volts coming in here. So rule of thumb, I like to have at least uh, double that voltage in terms of capacity in the capacitors. That makes those capacitors pretty big. They're they're a little over two inches long by about uh, an inch around. So they will take up still some space inside. We'll, uh, in the next video, I'll actually build the uh, power supply and the circuit card for the, the diodes for the rectification and whatnot, and you will see that then. But I have uh, designed the power supply. That's where I'm going with that. Uh, next video, I should have the parts. I've got them on order, and they're supposed to be here in anywhere between uh, two to eight days. So uh, they should come in just in time for my next uh, day filming. Um, and we will put this together. We'll make some measurements, figure out exactly what we're getting out. 
And uh, after that, we'll have built the power supply, the circuit card. I just will need to drill the chassis, mount the components, and uh, assemble the preamp. At that point, I'll have a working uh, tube preamp. I'll be able to test it and see how it works. I'm still not sure what I'm doing for a cabinet. So, uh, like I say, flying by the seat of my pants for that, I will... Uh, We'll probably sort that out over the next uh, next couple of weeks while I'm working on this. I have some ideas. Uh, and also, if you were paying close attention on my layout drawing and on the circuit, I have not incorporated the pilot light yet. I completely let that one slip my mind too. So I'll, uh, I'll take care of the pilot light too. It'll be pretty standard. Uh, just a, a, a standard sort of fender style amp jewel uh, across the 6.3 uh, volt uh, uh, secondary as well, the, the, the heater supply. So uh, that's it for this one. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, check out my band One Soul Thrust. As always, the links are in the description below. And until the next video, we'll see you.